Satshrikal everyone and a very warm welcome to all the viewers of KCGC TV channel. I am Jaspreet Kaur, Assistant Professor, Khalsa College of Education, GT Road, Amritsar. Today, I am here to discuss with you about a very interesting group of plants that is bryophytes. The plant kingdom is divided into four divisions the Thelophyta, the Bryophyta, the Pteridophyta, and the Spermatophyta. In Thelophytes, the plant body is not differentiated into root, stem, or leaf-like structures, for example, algae, fungi. In Bryophytes, though, the plant body is differentiated into root-like, leaf-like and stem-like structures but the vascular tissues that is xylem and phloem are absent, for example, mosses. Further, in pteridophytes, the plant body is differentiated into true root, stem and leaves and also the conducting tissue is present in such plants, for example, the fern plants. And lastly, the highly evolved and seed producing plants, the spermatophytes, which includes gymnosperms and angiosperms, for example, cycas, pinus, rice, wheat, maize, etc. Now, let me discuss about one of the divisions of the plant kingdom that is bryophyta further in detail. Now, the word bryophyta, it has been obtained from two words, bryon and phyton. Bryon means moss and phyton means plant, which means moss plant. Therefore, the bryophytes are commonly called as mosses. The bryophytes are most simple and primitive of the terrestrial plants. These plants are very small, rather inconspicuous. They are larger than the microorganisms, but smaller than the higher forms of plants. Most of the plants, they grow up to a height of 2 to 5 centimeters. The bryophytes, they lack complex tissues and also any of the lignified cells. This is the reason why the bryophytes are not preserved as fossils. Now, the bryophytes, they grow mostly in moist, shady, humid or damp localities because as I have already told you that xylem for the conduction of water and phloem for the conduction of food is not present Therefore, the plant should be in close contact with the moisture or water so that it can absorb water very easily. Also, the bryophytes, they commonly grow in tufts or cushions on stones or tree trunks, thereby contributing to the green color of the forests or the mountains. Further, the bryophytes, they are distributed throughout the world. The division Bryophyta further includes three classes, Hepaticopsida, Anthocerotopsida, and bryo Bryopsida, which includes liverworts, hornworts, and mosses respectively. The division Bryophyta, it includes 960 genera and 24,000 species. This is a very interesting group of plants because it shows affinities not only with the lower plant forms like thallophytes but also with the pteridophytes as well. Most interestingly, the bryophytes, they are called as the amphibians of plant kingdom because they grow on land but they need water for their sexual reproduction. That is, the male gametes needs to swim up to the female gametes and for the same they require water. That means they cannot complete their life cycle without the presence of water. That's why most of appropriately they are known as the amphibians of plant kingdom. 
Now, let us talk about the morphological features of bryophytes further in detail. As the bryophytes, true root, stem and leaves are absent, however, they possess hair-like structures called as rhizoids, which are analogous to the roots and they perform the function of absorption as well as anchorage. Now, let us discuss about the morphological features of bryophytes. As we have already discussed that the bryophytes, they lack true root, leaves and stems. Although they possess hair-like structures called as rhizoids, which are analogous to the roots because they perform the function of anchorage and absorption. Since the true root stem and leaves is absent, therefore the plant body of bryophytes is called as the thalloid in lower plant forms, for example liverworts and an erect rootless leafy shoot in case of mosses. The plant body, it consists of simple parenchymatous cells which are further differentiated into several types, for example, chlorophyllous cells, storage cells, rhizoids, etc., depending upon the function which they perform. The plant body of bryophytes, it bears the male and female reproductive organs. The male reproductive organs are called as the enthridia and the female reproductive organs are called as the archegonia. The enthridium, it is composed of a globular capsule-like structure with a multicellular elongated stalk. The capsule is surrounded or protected by a layer of sterile jacket cells. The capsule it encloses a mass of enterozoid mother cells which give rise or produce a single biciliate sperm or the enterozoid. Whereas the archegonia, they are flask shaped. The lower swollen portion is called as the venter and the upper elongated portion is called as the neck. The female gamete, which is non-motile and large, is present in the venter itself. Now, the next important feature about the bryophytes is that they show alternation in generations, which means that the bryophytes, they exhibit two morphologically distinct heteromorphic generations that is the gametophytic generation and the sporophytic generation. In gametophytic generation, there is a single set of chromosomes that is N and the sporophyte is having double chromosomal set that is 2N. The gametophyte of bryophytes is long-lived, very well-developed, dominant, green, autotrophic, bears male and female gametes and is commonly called as the plant. Therefore, the plant body of the, uh, of the bryophytes, they exhibit the gametophytic phase of the life cycle which is haploid. Whereas on the other side, the sporophytic generation is recessive and is completely dependent upon the gametophyte physically as well as physiologically. This can be further clarified with the help of a graphical representation of the life cycle of bryophytes. Now, if you see in the PPT, the life cycle of the bryophytes or you can say that the sexual reproduction is highly advanced oogamous type. Oogamous type means where the male gametes are many, motile and small and the female gamete is single, large and non-motile. The reproductive organs they develop 
on the plant itself which is the gametophyte. Now the reproductive organs in 3D and archegonia they produce the gametes uh, which means the enthridia will reproduce the male gametes and the archegonia will reprodu uh, will produce the female gametes now water is must for the fertilization to takes place many entherozoids which are small biflagellate and motile swim up to archegonia to fertilize or fuse the female gametophyte which is large single and is embedded in the venter of the archegonia after the fertilization of the male and female gamete in the venter it give rise to a diploid cell which is called as the zygote now this being 2n in number is the first cell or the uh, mother cell of the sporophytic generation now this zygote it undergoes many mitotic divisions and give rise to a multicellular structure called as the embryo which is embedded in the venter of the archegonia only initially the venter cells they swell and they form a protective covering around the developing embryo and this protecting covering is called as the claptra now the embryo it further develops and undergo various mitotic divisions and give rise to a sporophyte or sporogonium the sporophyte in bryophytes is a simple structure which is composed of uh, foot seta and the terminal uh, portion which enclose the spores is called the capsule the foot basically it performs the function of anchorage the seta helps in the conduction of minerals to the capsule the sporophyte in bryophytes is a structure which is composed of foot seta and the terminal spore producing case the capsule the foot basically performs the function of anchorage the seta helps in the conduction of food to the capsule and the sporogenous mass present in the capsule it undergoes various reductional divisions that is meiosis to give rise to haploid spores which are formed in tetrads these meiospores they are the first cells or the mother cells of the gametophytic generation these spores they grow and develop into a complete gametophytic plant body now the alternation of generations is obligatory in bryophytes in the sense that the male and female gametes they fertilize to form a diploid zygote which in turn develops into a sporophyte or sporogonium which produces haploid spores and they again grow to form a complete gametophytic plant body so in today's lecture i have covered habit habitat morphology alternation of generations in bryophytes and why they are called as the amphibians of plant kingdom thank you so very much this is all about today's lecture it's a great pleasure to be on KCGC TV channel. Thank you once again.